What's poppin' y'all? Tiger has made the greatest comeback in rap history. Some are gonna try and say Meek Mill or any number of other rappers, but these rappers were aided with the fact that they were released from jail or prison usually. Believe it or not, that's an advantage when you're taking L's because you've got the sympathy from everyone once you get out. It's like a reset button, and suddenly you have all this attention on you once again. For Tyga, that wasn't the case, but for someone who went from being on top of the game, then falling to as low as he did, then coming back to the top again, it's an amazing story. Tyga was known as a hit maker. His songs were never really meant to get you thinking, but to get you moving. His songs were always in the club and on the radio, and the first big song I can remember by him was Coconut Juice back in 2008. It wasn't a huge hit, but I was hearing that song everywhere during that time, and you're probably more familiar with the remix that had Lil Wayne and Rich Boy on it. Diamond Life was another huge song, not for the fact that it was on the charts, but everybody who played video games has heard it, mainly on the soundtracks of Need for Speed, Undercover, and Madden 09. He was featured on Bedrock, that would peak at number 2 overall on the charts, but his first song to really chart high mainstream was Deuces with Chris Brown back in 2010. It peaked at number 14 overall on the charts, would be nominated for a Grammy, and ended up on Chris Brown's Fame album as well. Now the song we know Tyga for most, Rack City. This is Tyga's highest charting solo song as of today. In that era in 2011 to 2012, he would follow up with more hits like Faded, Make It Nasty, and Dope. But after Hookah and AO with Chris Brown, we wouldn't see Tyga on the charts at all for all of 2016 and 2017. This was the L-taking season for Tyga from about 2015 to 2017. He not only was stuck in a label situation with cash money that he wanted off of, but he said he didn't get paid for his hits that he made while on the label. They were delaying his album release, the Gold Album, so he just released it independently and after executive production from Kanye West and every Kardashian tweeting it and promoting it, it was a huge flop. Critics were calling it trash as well, it was very underwhelming quality wise and units it sold like 2k first week. He got sued by his former business partner for the Last King's clothing line for about 1.8 million dollars. He lost that beef he had going with Drake momentarily, got hit with a 20k tax lien and sued by the producer of Molly for not getting paid, ordered to pay some music video thought 50k. Birdman was refusing to release him from cash money purgatory until Tyga paid him 1 million, but he said he was still owed 12 to 15 million. He had allegedly piped out a tranny for 3 years, him facing his third eviction in the last 2 years from his mansion for trashing it, his Lambo and Bentley being repossessed from owing hundreds of thousands of dollars in payments, a warrant out for his arrest for missing court for the case of those missed payments, him owing a jeweler 200,000, the incident with the 14 year old IG girl thought that wanted a music career but tried to spin it as Tyga sliding in her DMs, being ordered by a judge to pay a Ho China rent, car payments, and a nanny, being exposed as having Kylie Jenner buying the cars for herself but showing it as him getting it for her. A former rap all star had been relegated to being a recurring character on Kylie Jenner's Snapchat stories. But the only W he had, which was having the girl every rapper wanted, turned into a huge L when she dumped him. It's incredible when I list it how many L's he actually took, even though I probably missed some. Although some of them were debunked and shown to be fake or blown out of proportion, the media just didn't care. Tyga's Kyoto album was also a flop last year, but let me make this very clear. During this time he had a fire mixtape, of what they talking about. Ice Cream Man, Glitter, Bustin' Out The Bag, Rap Star, Master Sweet, this mixtape was full of bangers, and I recommend y'all peep it because I only believe it went under the radar because people had this notion in their head at the time of Tyga taking only L's, they wouldn't even bother listening to his music. But Tyga took everything in stride, he just stayed focused, and this year, in 2018, he's made the greatest comeback of all time. Who can you name that took that many L's in that short amount of time and bounced back just like it was 2011 again, like nothing ever happened? Nobody is talking about this. All the media outlets that were insulting Tyga and making fun of him catching L after L after L and spreading misinformation about him are nowhere to be found to give him praise when he's managed to turn all of that around and have huge success again and maybe reach a higher peak in his career than he ever has before. But I am a fair man. We gotta give credit where it is due. He has managed to make the hottest song of the summer with Taste featuring Offset 
In just two months, the music video was at 144 million views with the old Tiger style of hoes and basically a club anthem. It's being heard everywhere, and right now, it's peaked at number 13 overall on the Billboard charts and is likely only going up from here on out. But some people might consider it a lucky hit, which I don't believe. But he comes back with Swish, the music video already doing like 2 million in 2 days, and it's another good song that's going to be played everywhere. He's also featured on Iggy Azalea's Cream song that's at over 50 million views right now. He's in his bag right now. What I liked about Tiger's comeback is he wasn't trying to justify himself to everyone or get attention unnecessarily like every rapper is doing right now. He just went back to the basics and asked himself, why was he so successful in the first place? And then focused on making really good music and a music video to accompany it and boom, he's back on top like the L's never happened. He hasn't done any interviews since this new career resurgence he's had, but I'm really interested to see how hard all the people that clowned him so much are going to ride him now, especially radio stations that are forced to play his tracks again and again, and are most likely turning up to his music after all of this. From an outside perspective, it looks like the Kylie Jenner breakup was the greatest thing to happen to Tyga's career. Because if he had stayed in that relationship, his music career would have continued down the gutter, and he'd always have something to say. Look here, I'm still winning. I got the female y'all want. Kind of like Meek Mill when he was taking L's, talking about Nicki Minaj. It forced him to reevaluate his career and focus on his progression as a rapper, and coming back after getting knocked down so low is something we almost never see. But let me know why you think Tyga was able to come back in the comments. Like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Peace.